Hey, what's up? Today I'm going to share with you my journey of finding the best 100% whole wheat sourdough bread. So let's get into this, shall we? 7 gram salt, 250 gram water, 70 gram starter, mix, and of course 350 gram whole wheat flour. Once it mixed properly, let it rest for 30 minutes. Bring the water close to you because you need to wet up your hand time by time and go ahead and give it one set of a stretch and fold. Round it up and let it rest for another 30 minutes. Then another set of a stretch and fold. Round it up beautifully and let it rest for 45 minutes. This time I'm going to give it one set of coil fold. But this kind of coil fold. I'm going to grab the dough, stretch a little bit, and put it back into the bowl. This one I call pizza fold. It's amazing. Round it up and let it rest for another 45 minutes. After that, another grabbing and stretching or coil fold. This time, let it finish its bulk fermentation for up to two hours. After almost two hours, bring it on the surface and do the pre-shape. 20 minute uncovered on the counter, then I'm gonna shape this bad boy. The dough texture is completely different than my normal sourdough. So when you shape it, you need to be careful and be gentle. I live in hot climate and my room temperature is around 26. So it takes about two hours to proof on the counter. Then I'm gonna bring it on the baking paper, give it one deep confidence score. And with the help of Dutch oven, I'm gonna bake it for 20 minutes at 230, then remove the lid and bake for another 20 minutes. Of course, for second 20 minutes, I'm gonna reduce the heat to 215. Not bad for 100% whole wheat, I mean, nice ear. Compared to normal sourdough, of course it has compact crumb. Let's try it. For the one who liked the taste of whole wheat, it's amazing. And that was my first effort. What if I increase the hydration level? For the second shot, I'm going to use Atoli's method. Mix 350 gram whole wheat flour plus 280 gram water. Let it rest for two hours and without doing anything, magic happen. Voila, the dough gains some strength. Time to add the starter, which is 70 gram. Wet up your hand and try to mix the starter with the dough properly. Grab and lift the dough a couple of times and try to round it inside the bowl. Let it rest for 30 minutes. Time to add salt, which is 7 gram. Again, wet up your hand and mix it up. You can wet up the surface and bring the dough on the surface so you have fully control. If it's a stick to your hand, don't worry, use a scraper. Maybe 10 to 20 slap and fold. And with the help of the scraper, round the dough Into the bowl, let it rest for another 30 minutes. If you are a freak like me, you can grab the dough a couple of times and round it inside the bowl too. After 30 minutes, time to give it one set of coil fold. Let it rest for another 45 minutes, then another set of coil fold, and let the dough finish its bulk fermentation for up to two hours. Dough fermented beautifully, time to pre-shape. 20 minutes uncovered on the counter and time to shape. This one is higher hydration so the dough is stickier. Feel free to use a little bit of flour. And with the help of scraper into the banneton, let it finish its bowl fermentation. This time, in my second effort, I tried overnight cold proofing. After two of hours of cold proofing, I kind of regret because the dough has overproofed. I give it one confident score, kinda confident. 
Baking structure would be the same and let's check the crumb. This one look really gorgeous. I wish I didn't let it proof overnight and I use a stronger flour. The crumb was lighter and the taste was richer and a bit more sour. And that lead me to my third effort. Nothing wrong with my whole wheat flour, but I'm gonna change it to something more stronger. I mean, way stronger. No sponsor, but this brand is my all-time favorite. A very high-protein stone ground flour, which is the best to experience higher hydrations. Mix everything together, let it rest for 30 minutes, wet up your hand, and go ahead and give it one set of a stretch and fold. This time I'm gonna bake with 78% hydration. But surprisingly, I wish I increased the hydration up to 85%. I'm gonna give this beautiful dough two set of a stretch and fold, each time 30 minutes rest, and two set of coil fold, each time 45 minute rest. Finally, let it rest and finish its ball fermentation for up to two hours. Time to pre-shape it with the help of the surface and let it sit on the counter for 20 minutes uncovered. And of course, shaping time. This has to be my third attempt of making a 100% whole wheat sourdough bread. Let's see. Then I score it and bake it same as the other ones. And the result was amazing. It feels super light and hollowy. The crust is amazing and I see a very nice ear. And of course, the crown was beautifully airy and fluffy. Of course, the taste was better, because I use a better flour. But I noticed it was a little bit less sour than the other ones too. I couldn't stop myself not to increase the hydration and try for one last time. Here is the result. When you bake 100% whole wheat sourdough bread, you need to increase the hydration level as much as you can. For that, of course, you need to invest on a very good, high quality flour. Atolis and coil food gonna help you a lot. Last but not least, you need to skip overnight cold proof because the dough gonna overproof. All right, that was it. If you like this video and you want to support my channel, you can like this video, give me a super like, share this video with your friend, and subscribe my channel so you don't miss my next video. Like always, keep baking and take good care of yourself.